up because I think there's this tendency for Asian Americans, especially as Americans in general, where there's this tendency to either tack really hard to uh, keep your culture or tack really hard the other way and be really American. And my parents kind of fell into that latter bucket where they um, we they knew Tagalog, which is like native language of the Philippines, but they never really spoke it at home and um, they because I think of their, their own experience of being second generation um, was very difficult. And I realized growing up that um, being Asian American was uh, very different for them than it was for their grandparents, or my grandparents or their parents. Um, and it's always been a really hard, like long part of my journey to understand how my identity relates to Asian American because where I grew up, there weren't a lot of Asian Americans, and a lot of my identity as an Asian American was always defined by how other people viewed me first. Thank you so much. I think I saw another microphone go up. <laughs> so I guess I always knew I was Asian American. So I have uh, having having one parent who is wholly Asian. Um, there was always an understanding that I had sort of two halves, two sides. Um, I don't believe, I don't, <clears throat> this whole gets into this whole debate about like what percentage are you, but uh, sort of 200%. So like one, one person of me was Japanese and one person was American. Um, that said, in the world that I grew up in, there were no Asian Americans. There were no Asians. I was, I was sort of unique in a sense. Uh, for, in the community which I grew up in, with people I knew, uh, my father has a funny story about the town he grew up in. Um, in which they, in which he always said, I grew up in a diverse town in Illinois. We had a Polish family and a Jewish family, which doesn't really sound like diversity in the modern world anymore. Um, so I always knew I was, I always knew I was Asian American. Um, but I think the other thing about it was growing up, um, and I think I think this is one of the great things about Asian Americans today, <clears throat> is that it used to be Asian American was very divisive, very di very diverse but they weren't together. There were Chinese Americans, there were Japanese Americans, there were Hmong Americans, there were Philippine Americans, but the sense that we were somehow all connected wasn't something that existed. There was a lot of discrimination amongst Asian Americans. And today, I find uh, among you know, young people, um, people my, my age, there's a much greater sense that we are all together, a community working together. We may differ in politics, we may differ in opinions about some things, um, but it's but we are recognizing that we have a common cause together, which I think is really exciting about today. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else who wants to speak to this question? I think for me, that from the first time I realized it was just from food. I think <laughs> I just just because I I never I had a lot of uh, Indonesian relatives in uh, Maryland, and so um, going to the house smelling paleo. That, that really, literally, you know, woke up my senses, right? Because you could walk into a house that smells so different than any house you've smelled before. So that's an olfactory sort of trigger that you're thinking, wow, this is definitely a different type of food. There's a rice cooker. I've never seen a rice cooker before, right? I didn't really, I didn't even know what it was. I thought, I, oh, I have to be in the microwave, but like, a rice cooker. So, what, you know, so that kind of thing then be like, okay, people are eating with their hands. Like, okay, this is also different. Um, so probably some of those customs, and then of course praying as well, you know, was a different type, different form of prayer. So I think seeing those things when you're, when you're young, you start to realize, okay, then you hear a few other you know, broken English, things like that, you realize, okay, I'm definitely in a different type of household here. Um, so it was just, for me, it was just going back and forth, and sometimes feeling it, and sometimes not feeling it, depending on where you were. Okay, thank you so much. Um, uh, so I, yeah, for me, I think it was, I, I guess I'm struggling to, I guess what I would say is I didn't think I was Asian American through community as much, because I also didn't grow up around a lot of community. Um, so I think I knew I was Asian American from exclusion and knowing that there was something very different about me and that had to do with me being Indian and it also meant me like hiding a lot of my, what my mom would cook for me and forcing her to cook like American food so that I didn't stand out. So yeah, I think there, 
I feel like there's like two ways. It's either you have a community of Asian Americans and you feel like Asian American through that, or you don't have it and you feel the lack of that. Yeah, I think my answer would echo a lot of what you're saying because the question itself, when did you know that you were Asian American, is basically asking when did you know that you were different? Because to ask when did you know you were Asian American is to suggest that you were a different type of American, you know? And I think it comes from eating different foods, as people said, you know, having different cultures, having different traditions. Um, and as a kid, you want to hide any difference possible. You want to be just like everybody else. You want to be just like all the other cool kids. But as an adult, you realize, oh, this difference is really something meaningful. This is something that's special about me. And then there's a way to find a community where, you know, you have so much in common with them, and that difference is celebrated. Um, I think that gets to what Dick was saying about, you know, there's a, there's a large contingent of Asian Americans um, coming together to get political power. Because sure, we have difference, and we have been excluded. But then through our difference, through our mutual identity as Asian Americans, there's some political power that can be had there. There's some organizing that can be had there. And there's some really lovely communities that can be had. Uh, so for the people who spoke about being different in their community, um, how, when was the time that the difference turned into something special? I think the difference turned into something special when I felt like I could be myself in an Asian American community. When I hung out with my Asian American friends, I felt like I could be myself. And what that means is that you know when you're hanging out with um, with uh, a group of particularly white Americans, I think that a lot of what you do is seen through the lens of oh that's because you're Asian, or you know it's seen through the lens of difference. Like you know growing up, I was really ashamed of the fact that I liked math. That's oh so stereotypical. Of course, all Asians like math, but no, it's because I myself, Andy Bo, like math, you know. And I think um, it's you know this Asian identity, Asian American identity, turning into something special is when you can hang out with people and really be authentically yourself and not have your own interests and your own um, hobbies and stuff be seen through the lens of difference, but be seen through the lens of just individuality, just yourself, you know, regardless of whether it Thank you. I would say for me, probably, I don't, I think it was only special when I came to Indonesia for the first time when I was 10 years old. Um, and just seeing the, 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 the way of life here and how, how nice people were and, um, and the way they treated me, the way they accepted me here. I think that was probably when I realized Indonesia was a very special place. Um, and. Until you have that type of exposure to other places, which I think a lot of Americans don't, um, and actually have the chance to live in another place, to speak another language, and meet different cultures, and pray with other religions, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, that's when you realize that your, your heritage does bring another perspective. Um, some people, you know, it, the culture comes to them, others have to go to it. I think in my case, I had to seek it out. It wasn't something that was uh, encouraged in my house. My dad, when he came over to the to the U.S., he was uh, with uh, my grandfather, who was um, the first labor minister under Sukarno. He went to get a PhD in the U.S. Uh, in Ithaca, and and basically my dad didn't want to come back, so my, my grandfather had to come back because he was he had a government job. But my dad was smitten with the U.S. and blondes and things like that, right? So he definitely wanted to stay in the U.S. So. Uh, that was something that he sort of was sort of something that he sublimated and didn't really uh, allow to surface. Um, so fighting, so imagine the fight to, to figure out more about your culture, being born with it, I don't think is enough. I think he actually, in my case, took a lot of fight spaces. You have to you have to find out more about it yourself. And that, that's when you realize, okay, this is something special. I think I second that. I think it's, it's part of it. Time comes is when you start to learn the stories of your people, where they come from, where. Maybe you've been trying to hide from who you, where, where you come from, but you decide, well, I need to find out what this is about, you know, what, where I come from, and you find out about the contributions that your personal family or your community have given, what, what kinds of things they've done for the world and for the United States. Um, and that maybe starts to happen when you are able to independently start to research and learn about things. So, you know, maybe it's late high school, maybe it's college, when you are free to sort of explore beyond the standard curriculum. 
um, to learn about who you are and where you come from, and what are the great things about that culture. Um, that's maybe when you start, to, you, you, know, you start to recognize that there's something special about that. Um, and maybe also, I think, the rest of the community, other people grow up and they begin to look about differences among people. I, I mean, I just uh, agree. Uh, I think, for me, I, I try to think about, um, internally, it definitely has made me a more resilient and empathetic person. Um, I remember growing up, I hated Jackie Chan, because everyone was like, oh, you're Jackie Chan. Which I hate it, like, I'm not Jackie Chan, but I hate Jackie Chan. Um, but now, I always feel like it's such a good opportunity. I'm always so proud, um, in a way, when, uh, especially when I was growing up, there weren't even really high-profile Filipinos. But now everyone's like, oh, like Manny Pacquiao, like, oh, that's it's, that's so amazing. Yeah, like, I mean, that's actually like a good, I don't mind that embarrassing there. But, but that's such a, and I feel so proud in a way because it's like people, I can see the connection that people make that you know, um, like heritage-wise, like there are Filipinos out in the world doing great, amazing things. And even if it's just that small little bit that like registers in their head for that moment, it to me it's kind of like that idea that you're kind of pushing the needle, right? Um, and that to me is, is can be special. A question of do you love Jackie Chan now? I do. <laughs> great movie. He, makes great, he makes great movies. He, just, he doesn't stop. Or Shower 2. Shower 2. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, so the next question is How has being an Asian American affected your experience in Asia or Indonesia? Um, okay, so um, so just to, I guess, if you're not familiar with it, Fulbright ETA's English Teaching Assistance, we are cultural ambassadors. That means that um, we come from America to different countries, and we try and share things about America so that there's mutual understanding between the countries at like a lower, a lower scale, smaller scale, person to person. Um, so as an Indian American, I have uh, been representing India. Um, it's incredibly difficult to explain that I am American. I would tell people that I was Indian American, like I was. That was, I was like, oh, like Indian American, orang India America, and then people would go like, oh, okay, and I'd just be so happy, like, oh man, like I learned Indonesian, like. I can talk about this now, I'm so happy. And then one day I was with the guard of my school. They live, I lived at my school and then my guard, the guard and we, his family, I was close to them. And he was like introducing me to like people. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm being introduced now. Like I'm part of their family, whatever. And he tells them that one of my parents is white and one of them is Indian. And I had spent weeks and weeks telling people I was Indian American only to realize that they were saying, oh, because they thought I was saying I was half white. And it just in that moment, I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to explain this in a way, because I also, I okay, I'm gonna do another anecdote, so I don't wanna take a long time, but um, I, clearly this is like therapy for me, because I just finished my grant, so I'm just like going on and on. Um, so I was watching, <laughs> I was watching uh, Venom. Has anyone seen Venom? Yes. Yeah, so I was watching Venom with like a friend. Um, and sh I, the, right before the film, like we've been talking about just like, you know, she'd ask me, oh, do you use spoons in America? And like, do you use forks? And I was like, uh, like both? Like, cause you know, at home, I'm Indian, like Indian family, we use spoons, but at school I use knife and fork. And then, so we had this really deep, nice conversation and we're watching Venom. And she like, there's a, there's actually an Indian American character in the movie, he's the villain. And she like looks at me, she's like, so I'm confused, is he American? And I was like, yeah, yeah, he he is. And she's like, but, but he looks like you though. <laughs> and I was like, I just, what? Like we'd spent an hour before talking about like my Indian, and so I just, and then she was like, wait, and I was like, yeah, but that's exactly what, that he's American, I'm American. He's, and then she was like, oh, okay, I get it now. So I guess the point I'm trying to make here is it's not, it's not anyone's fault. It's just that what 
I feel my community has seen of America, it's just this one story, it's this one picture, it's all white, um, or on, it's either white or it's sometimes, like, sometimes black, but it, there's just no Asian there. So I think it's just hard for them to like know what it means until maybe they see kind of both things happening. So me saying I'm American and then also seeing it and like kind of sources that they think are respectable. So maybe they, there should be an Avenger that's Asian. Okay, that's, that was long-winded. So I, I guess just, I mean, I, but I think at the same time, um, maybe, maybe I'm, I can sort of cut people a lot of slack, but in the United States, race for so long has been a conversation between African American and, and white, right? I mean, all the other colors in this world have really been, historically been ignored. I mean, it's, you know, I think today there's a much greater recognition of it. Um, but for, for so long, it, there really was only two colors in the spectrum. And so often still today, when you hear conversations around race, there still are really only two colors uh, in the United States, too often. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, it, it's 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 sad when you think about when you when you when you recognize that people overseas don't see all of the variations that, that is American, all the different types of Americans out there. Um, they really sort of look at white people. Uh, <laughs> uh, I know, like you know, I mean, when I was in grad school in Tokyo. Uh, you know, the idea that the gaijin, which is foreigner, the outside person, really, when they're talking about Americans, they're really talking about hakuchi, the white people. <laughs> um, and it's, and it's, it's challenging to try to, to explain to people, but I guess we have to get out there and let people know more about us, because Asian Americans are the fastest growing minority in America today, right? So soon, more Americans are gonna look like this than they're gonna look like the other types. <laughs> Yeah, so I think everybody needs to begin to open their mind up. I think the United States is beginning to open their mind up, and we can hope that the rest of the world will also catch up. Yeah, I just want to add another thing because I, um, I do agree with you. I don't think it's anyone's fault necessarily. It's just the way that um, historically, and also I recognize that because um, English isn't really a very like, it's not exactly a very important language. I think the only a lot of the times the only kind of accessible media from the US is like movies and stuff. And it's not like books and all of these other things that you, people here definitely would engage with more if they could. And so I don't like, yeah. Um, and I guess, wow, I totally lost my train of thought. I don't know what I was gonna say. So someone else should talk. I think being Asian American and Asian is really fun. Uh, probably because I feel that I can blend in and it's a game of how long before they realize that I'm American? <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, as I speak Bahasa Indonesia to taxi drivers and Gojek drivers, I try to play a game to see how long it'll take them to realize, oh, this, this guy's accent's really weird. Like, well, why are you speaking like a really formal version of Indonesian? Like, what's going on, you know? Um, and I think it's just fun being able to blend in and really see a different part of Indonesia than I think some of my white American friends would be able to do because they would get a lot of stares, you know, it looks different seeing a bule around Kota Dua, for example, versus if I get to go to Kota Dua, it's, you know, I get to enjoy it in a different way, you know? Um, but it's been a lot of fun, and like you said, being Asian American in Asia is having an opportunity to teach people that America's very diverse, just like Indonesia is, you know? Sometimes people ask where I'm from, Dari Mana, and I'll say America, and then they'll say something like, what, your face? <laughs> you know, like your, your face is Asian, so how does that make any sense? And then I can say something like, well, America has hundreds of millions of people just like Indonesia, you know? So uh, I think it's really a, an opportunity to, to teach people about our two different countries and how they're both diverse, they're both full of many different people with many different faces and experiences. Thank you so much, Andy. So uh, I'm curious, actually, how you would say that in Bahasa Indonesia. So maybe you could explain. Uh, I don't know if this is accurate, but I'll say something like, "America kan berjuta jutaan." You know, America. Um, well, America has millions of people. Or uh, ad, you know, ada like like uh, like however many millions of people in America. Ada tiga ratus juta orang di Amerika kan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I'll and then I'll say something like, oh, but you know, 
my parents are from this country and I was born there. Or I'll say, you know, there are millions of people, so obviously we're all going to look different. We're all going to have different. All right. Thank you so much. Sorry about putting you on the spot there. No, it's fine. <laughs>